Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Matt, thanks for stopping by. Now I know we've got a lot of active series on this channel. We've still got the Great Smoky Mountain series, the uh, Mike Vala Streamers, the Ringneck Pheasant, and, and now we just started the Bass Flies. And we've got a long way to go with these series, so if you're interested in those, you know, make sure you stick around. But I did want to start another one today. This one, we did a video not too long ago about getting materials from craft stores. So I sat down and thought, hey, I just want to create a fly out of some of this material. So I grabbed my bag of feathers from the ringneck pheasant, and then uh, some of the wool, and then one little red duck feather. I said, let's come up with a fly with this. So what I came up with, it's this one that you're about to see. It's just a generic olive mayfly nymph tied on a curved hook with a red hot spot. So nothing really special, but I'm sure it's gonna catch fish. It's a generic mayfly nymph, so why wouldn't it? Now, here's the fun thing about this video. I haven't given the fly a name. I'm gonna leave that up to you folks. I wanna do a quick little contest and get your ideas for what we should call this thing. And to make it a little more exciting, I'll send the uh, winning entry a $25 gift card to Jay Stockard. Pretty much my go-to store for fly tying materials. So here's how to do it. Just leave a comment with what you think we should call this fly. And read all the other comments too. If you see somebody else has come up with a good name, hey, leave a comment under their comment and vote for theirs. So I'll let this run for a couple days. I don't know how long yet, just until we get enough enough names that we can pick a pretty cool one. Okay, so those are the rules, nothing much to them. Just leave a comment with what you think we should call this fly. So maybe we'll make this a series of just inventing some flies and coming up with some really cool names for them. So that's it. Really, it's a pretty easy tie and I think it's a pretty cool looking pattern. So I think you're gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. So there it is in the vise, just a generic olive mayfly nymph with red hot spot. Now I'm tying this on a size 14, it's a curved shank hook. I'm sure you could tie this on a straight shank and it would look just as cool. So I'm gonna start with 015 weight, put about eight wraps or so on this. And my thread is a black 70 denier UTC, kind of my go-to thread. I'll put a little dam behind it, take it up over it, put another dam in the front and then try to build some ramps. Make sure you leave a long tag, it's gonna be our rib. Now I'm taking this thread way back around the bend of the hook. I'm gonna go ahead and park this, this tag of this thread under my magnet just to keep it out of the way. But you might wanna rearrange it just so we can really get this tail pointing down. And for the tail, just the green and, and blue kind of metallic feathers from the ringneck pheasant, I'm gonna take about four of them. So not a big tail, but kind of long. So right there, you know, what would be a hook gap or so? I'll catch this in with a couple wraps right here. Take a look at it. And I don't mind if it sticks up a little bit. I think that looks pretty cool. So you can just snip these off or use it to uh, help fill in this weight or the hook back behind the weight right there. Now you'll want to snip it off. And let's see, I might want to throw a few more wraps right here just to try to smooth out this taper between the hook and the, and the weight. Okay, now let's put some wax on our thread because we're using this wool. This stuff right here. I'm just going to grab some of the, the olive from the middle. I think it's the lighter. There's olive on the middle and the edge, but I think the one in the middle looked a little bit better. So it doesn't take a whole lot, but Let's dub it on here pretty thin. Uh, and we're gonna take it up about two thirds before we start working on the thorax. Now here's something that sometimes you have to do. If, you're, if your dubbing is not sticking on your thread and it's starting to come off, don't be afraid to just grab it up here and then wrap it on like this with your hand up here close to the hook. You're kind of holding the, the dubbing on the, the thread while you wrap it. Now, a lot of people don't do that, but if you need to, by all means, just do that. Okay, so we got a nice big fuzzy body right there, and that's fine. We might need to trim it a little bit later, but go ahead and take this tag end of your thread and wrap it up here as a rib. I'm counter wrapping it, and I'm gonna do about four or five turns. It'll help lock this wool in, as well as give it maybe just a little bit of segmentation. 
So I'm going to go ahead and catch this off up here. And that last wrap is not perfect, but it's going to be covered by our wing case, so I'm not worried about it anyway. Now we can snip this off. And for the wing case, getting a little crazy here, um, a red slip of duck. I'm going to go ahead and rearrange this in here, get that pointed up. So I'm going to take my thread back to where I'm going to catch the wing case in, probably about right there. And this, just catch this in right on the top. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's not, it's just a small little sliver of red. So let's see if that's going to look okay when we fold it over. I think it's going to be fine right there. Let's bind this in. And if you need to smooth it out between that weight and the front of your hook, if you've got a step down, just spend a few extra wraps right here. It's not a big deal, but it will help this dubbing this thorax make it just a little bit easier. So put some more wax on and we're going to take some more of that same dubbing and make a pretty thick thorax, just a little bit thicker than the body there. Okay, that's fine. It's certainly buggy, but we might have some cleanup to do in just a minute. This natural straight wool is you know, it's a little fuzzier than your standard rabbit dubbing or, or whatnot. So let's tie in some legs before we fold that wing case over. And for the legs, I'm taking just another one of these green and gold. It's not a church window feather, but it looks a little bit like it. Um, just small slip, and then I'm going to cut a V-notch out in the middle of it. Now you've got something that looks a little bit like this. Just lay it on there. Make sure your thread is... It's hanging a little bit back on that thorax and just lay this over the top and we'll put a couple wraps and then we'll pull them to size. So almost tent style right there. Just a couple of wraps, not tight. Situate your legs and you can always use that, that uh, wing case we're going to pull over to orient them if you need to. I want them to be a little bit shorter than that so that's why I don't have any tight wraps on it just yet. I can pull them shorter. And I think that's going to work right there. So I'll put a tight wrap or two and that spun them around. I did not want that to happen, but we can fix that. Oh yeah. Just don't want to crowd my eye right there, which we're getting a little bit up there. Okay. We can get those legs situated how we like. So let's fold this wing case over, our hot spot. Push these legs back down to the side a little bit and catch this off. Okay, it's not tight yet. Let's take another look at it. Those legs are gonna look fine. That wing case is gonna be okay. So now I can put a tight wrap or two before I snip off this red duck. And we got a little bit of excess right there, but we can take care of that. Just push it up with your thumb, take the thread right behind the eye, and then we'll ramp it back up and build us a nice big nymph head. Okay, I think we got some room for a whip finish. And we're going to have a little cleanup because that wool is kind of going all over the place. But that's okay. And just leave it if you want. Make it a, a bigger, buggier looking fly. Go here and saw that off. And take a look at it. You might just be able to pull these long wool feathers, wool fibers out, or trim them, or leave them, whatever you think. But there you go. Pretty simple pattern. I think it's pretty cool looking. I'm sure it's going to work. It's a generic olive mayfly nymph, so why wouldn't it work? But that's it, my friends. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care, and we'll see you next time.